Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Gabby and today we're gonna be doing another book haul And I think oh my gosh, it's been a minute since the last time that I've done a book haul I'm pretty sure the last one that I made was in March and I have collected and received so many books since the month of March If I had to guess I would say maybe there's around 40 to 50 books surrounding me right now and I'm so excited to tell you all about them But before we do jump into today's video I just wanted to say a huge thank you to a new sponsor on this channel, which is love and pies Love and pies is a free-to-play merge to mobile game that can be played on any phone or any tablet So your goal in this game is to build a thriving business And the way that you do that is really cool because you can combine the different resources that you have into baked goods and serve your customers And you can also be renovating your cafe while while also discovering some family secrets. You know, like there's some mysteries to be solved within this game as well, which I think makes it really fun and really unique. So Love and Pies follows this character named Amelia Green and she's, you know, recently dealing with a pretty rough divorce and she's moving back to the countryside with hopes to renovate her family's old cafe. And as she's working to restore this cafe, she uncovers some dark family secrets, some like romantic feelings that had been forgotten about. And the story is able to blend sitcom with like telenovelas novella with like a dash of like cozy mystery vibes. It's been so fun to escape into the wholesome-ish world of Appleton and just, you know, take a break from the day. Just like have some me time, you know, play a really cute game. I love that this game is so multifaceted and you can meet a huge cast of wonderful diverse characters and you can challenge yourself in various events and competitions. I also love the different customizations you can make on your cafe while you're building it. It just makes it feel very personal and I've really enjoyed playing this game because of the cozy nature of it. It's just so relaxing to play it at the end of the day and especially like while listening to an audiobook. It's just really nice. I also just love that it has like the cozy feel of like a restaurant kind of game where you're like serving customers but then it also has that mystery aspect that keeps me very intrigued and keeps me wanting to play more. So if you love juicy secrets with that small town gossip vibe and a dash of mystery, then I highly recommend checking out Love and Pies. So make sure to go and download Love and Pies using my link down below. And thank you so much once again to Love and Pies for sponsoring today's video. Jumping right into the books because there are so many books. As I've mentioned, I'm a little bit overwhelmed. The first two books I wanted to show you came from Book of the Month. These were my picks from the month of April. And the first one was Romantic Comedy, which this is an adult romance book that I did in fact read in the month of April and it ended up being okay for me. I really love the beginning of this one and then I feel like the second half of the book just kind of lost me a little bit because of some things that were introduced in the second half. But this one was really interesting because we follow this woman who's a writer for a TV show that's very comparable to SNL. You know, it's very SNL vibes and then it's about how she falls for this guy who's a pop star. And then I ended up picking My Only Survivors by Megan Miranda, which this one unfortunately ended up being a DNF for me because I just could not get into it but I was excited for this one because it was the thriller pick for that month and I mean this cover is just absolutely stunning but I just don't know if Megan Miranda's thrillers are for me I don't know what it is but I can never seem to get into her writing so this was a DNF for me and will probably soon be a part of an unhaul which by the way I think I do have a lot of books or enough books to film another book unhaul sometime soon so let me know if that's something you care to see I have a whole stack of books that came from Penguin Random House because Penguin Random House is the best. Starting off this list, I have Our Share of Night, which this one is a book that I am so excited to read. I have plans to read this one in the month of May. And this book was recently translated. I believe this author is Argentinian and this book was recently translated to English. And this one, I'm pretty sure it's a horror book. It could be a little bit of like mystery thriller as well, but I think it's mainly horror. And the main description just says, a woman's mysterious death puts her husband and son on a collision course with her demonic family. And this book is also incredibly long. It's like about 600 pages. Like, do you, can you believe how thick she is? Oh my god. I also got For You and Only You by Caroline Kepnes, which this is the fourth book in the Joe Goldberg, you know, You series of books. I actually do have plans to read this one as well in the month of May, so I'm very much looking forward to that. I have mixed feelings on the You series overall because the first book was a five star for me, like that original book, You. I was obsessed. I loved it. Five stars, amazing. And then the next two books, I ended up feeling like they were pretty okay so I'm definitely curious to see how I'm going to end up feeling 
feeling about this one. They also sent Just As You Are, which this one is a debut rom-com that just sounds so freaking cute because just look at this blurb up here. It says, the only thing worse than hating your boss, being attracted to her. Like, okay, yes, sign me the fuck up. On the back too, it says, equal parts witty and steamy, this debut rom-com brings a healthy dose of queerness to a Pride and Prejudice inspired enemies to lovers romance. And I noticed too on the back, it talks about how our main protagonist, Liz, works at a queer magazine in New York that's on the verge of shutting down until it's bought at the last minute by two wealthy lesbians. Okay, that has a lot of, um, that, you know, that ticks a lot of boxes for me when it comes to things that I'm looking for in books. Random House also sent me Lone Women by Victor LaVale as well as The Changeling by Victor LaVale. And Lone Women is one that I have plans to read this month. I'm very excited about this one. It's a historical fiction horror book from what I've heard, from what I understand. I'm really a little bit, you know, nervous to read this one because it takes place in the year 1915, which, you know, if you know me, you know me in historical fiction, we don't always vibe together. So I am a little bit nervous at the time period in this book. But I'm also just very curious because at this point, I've read one book from this author before. And even though that book wasn't really my thing either because it was a little bit fantasy-ish or like on the fantasy side of things. I've always been really interested in checking out more books from this author because I do like his writing a lot. And so I'm really excited to check out Lone Women. This one just says, a woman with a past, a mysterious trunk, and a town on the edge of nowhere. Also, were so kind enough to send me one of his backlist books, which this is The Changeling. It's The Changeling, right? That's how you say that? And this one is a horror book that I have heard some pretty good things about. All I know about it is that it's about this guy who his father has disappeared and he left behind a box of books and some strange reoccurring dreams. And now our protagonist is a father himself and the strange dreams start to return and start reoccurring again. It says that his wife starts showing signs of postpartum depression and then she commits a horrific act and vanishes and then he begins a quest to find his wife and child who are nothing like he'd imagined. This sounds like it's gonna be absolutely wild. I've heard really great things about this and a lot of the blurbs on the back of this book talk about how this is like the perfect horror book for the summertime. So like, sign me up. I can't wait to read this. I also just really love the blue on this cover. I just think it's so beautiful. And next up, they sent me the book Rootless, which this one is a romance slash contemporary fiction, kind of like literary fiction style of story. The inside here just says a provocative debut novel about a marriage in crisis that asks, can you ever be rooted in a home that's on the brink of collapse? And I wanted to read this one because even though I don't read a ton of contemporary fiction these days, something that I really do like in the contemporary genre is reading about a marriage that is like on the brinks of things, you know, going to shit. I don't know why I find it so interesting to read about marriage in general. Like, I don't know what it is, but I just really love stories that follow a married couple and you kind of get to see their struggles with marriage and whether or not they think that it's something worth saving. Like, I don't know, I'm really invested in stories like that. So I wanted to check this one out. And then Random House also sent Greek Lessons, which this one is another one that's been recently translated. This author's Korean and they're also the author of The Vegetarian, which I know is like a really popular book that I have not yet read, but I've heard really great things about that one as well. So in this story, it sounds like we're following two characters who are dealing with a lot of pain in their lives. It says for her in the space of just a few months, she has lost both her mother and the custody battle for her nine-year-old son. And for him, it's the pain of growing up between Korea and Germany being torn between two cultures and languages and the fear of losing his independence. And then it says Greek Lessons is the story of the unlikely bond between this pair and a tender love letter to human intimacy and connection. This sounds like it's going to be absolutely incredible and it's only 172 pages. Like it is so short. And then lastly, Random House sent The Haunting of Alejandra, which this one is one that I'm also so freaking excited to read and I may or may not be reading it this month. Wink, wink. And this one is a horror novel, as far as I understand. It says, a woman is haunted by the Mexican folk demon in this ravishing and provocative literary horror novel about motherhood, family legacy, and self-discovery. Ooh, bitch. Oh, this sounds like it's gonna be so good. And isn't this cover just so beautiful? Like, I'm obsessed with this shade of orange. Like, I think it looks really beautiful and all the flowers. Ooh. All right, and then next up, Berkeley and Berkeley Romance sent me a handful of books. This one, Sisters of the Lost Nation, was sent to me by Berkeley. 
So this one on the bottom here, it says that it's part gripping thriller and part mythological horror, which very much intrigues me. Those are a lot of keywords for me. A young native girl's hunt for answers about the women mysteriously disappearing from her tribe's reservation leads her to delve into the myths and stories of her people. It just sounds like it's gonna be so beautiful and so hard hitting. And this one, from what I've seen on Goodreads, it's getting some really high reviews so far, which has me really excited to check this one out. And then Berkeley Romance was so kind to send four of their recently published romance books. One of them that I have already read is The Nanny by Lana Ferguson. This is one that I read in the month of April because I was just so curious about it because we're following this woman who becomes a nanny for this guy who's like a single dad and then she finds out that he used to be signed up for her OnlyFans. Like she used to have an OnlyFans account but I don't think she, I don't think she would ever show her face though. So like he never knew that it was her but she knew that it was him and it's just one of those you know really funny kind of like mistaken identity like they like one of them knows who the other is kind of situation and it's just really interesting but also wow this book is steamy just a heads up like there is some steamy scene in this book. It is very erotic, very 18 plus. And then they also sent Jasmine and Jake Rock the Boat, which this is one that sounds like it's gonna be really cute because it says an impulsive decision to join an Alaskan cruise getaway brings the chance for a romantic adventure in this enemies to lovers romance. So we've got enemies to lovers, we've got Alaskan cruise. Like I love books that take place in Alaska. Like how fun does that sound? It's also cool because this girl Jasmine, the protagonist, she lives in Seattle. So like Seattle, another cool thing that like draws me to this story. And then we have Love and Other Flight Delays by Denise Williams. And this one is so cool because apparently it's a novella collection of three different short stories or three different novellas that this author has written. And I'm pretty sure they all take place around the airport or they all have something to do with like flights in the airport. And that's why it's called Love and Other Flight Delays. Like how cute is that? I don't know if I've ever read a romance book that's like a collection of novellas or like short stories. Like I don't read a ton of romantic short stories. I feel like if anything, when it comes to short stories, I read mostly like horror books that are short stories. So I'd be really curious to check this one out. And they also sent The Love Wager by Lynn Painter. And this is from the same author as Mr. Wrong Number. I don't think that I've read anything from this author yet, but this one says two people make a wager on who can find love first, not realizing what they should be betting on is each other. This sounds very much like a uh, Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating kind of situation where they're like trying to get love quicker than the other, but then they realize that they just need to be together. Like, I just love that so much. All right, and then Atrio was so kind to send me three books. There's three arcs here. The first one is going to be Chef's Choice by TJ Alexander. And this is the same author as Chef's Kiss. I don't know why that's so hard for me to say. Chef's Choice? Chef's Choice. I think it's because there's two CHs in the front here, but they have like different pronunciations slightly and my brain just went for a loop. Uh, but this one actually comes out on May 30th. And this is one that I'm excited about because I was a pretty big fan of Chef's Kiss. That was this author's debut romance book, I'm pretty sure. And this one says, a fake dating arrangement turns to real love in this deliciously delightful queer rom-com. And this one also takes place in New York City. So like, need I say anymore? I am a sucker for fake dating. That's like one of my top, top, top favorite tropes. I live for it, love it. I can't wait to read this. And then they also sent The Long Way Back, which this one is an arc that comes out on June 13th. And I think this one is a thriller. Just listen to this top blurb, like what the heck? It says, good mamas don't let their babies grow up to be Instagram stars. What? <laughs> it says mother and daughter Charlie and Eva never sought social media fame, but when a stunning photo of Eva went viral, fame found them. And then it's about how Eva goes missing less than a week before her graduation. I don't know, it sounds so interesting because I love thrillers that involve like social media in any way, especially like Instagram. I don't know, I think that's so fascinating. I can't wait to check this one out. And then they also sent The Last One by Will Dean, which this one's also an advanced copy. This one doesn't go on sale till August 8th, so like, what the heck? This is very advanced. But this one, oh my gosh, I am so intrigued by the premise of this one because this is by author Will Dean, which I've read his book Firstborn and I wasn't the biggest fan of that one because that was the one that involved like the twins and like the twin trope is just so overdone and like I'm tired of it, you know? But this one, oh my gosh, the premise of this one sounds so interesting. So it's about this woman named Kaz who is on board this exclusive cruise liner ship called the Atlantica, right? And then she finds out like that after her her first night on this ship. She goes out onto the ship and she finds that everything is completely empty. There are no passengers, no crew, nobody but her. 
It says the Atlantica is steaming into the mid-Atlantic and Kaz is the only person on board. But that's just the beginning of the terrifying journey she finds herself trapped on in this white knuckled thriller. What? That sounds like my worst fucking nightmares. Like being trapped on a fucking cruise ship like this by myself? Absolutely not. So horrifying. Like this sounds like a horror novel. You know, like this is scary. Damn, this one is also pretty long. This one's like 400, like over 430 pages. So I'm hoping to love this one. It just, it has such a great premise. I'm very intrigued by this. Right, and then next up, Harper Collins and Harper Teen sent me three of their recently published books. The first one is Bianca Torre is Afraid of Everything. And this one sounds like it's going to be really interesting because it says in this absurd darkly comical young adult thriller that is a deceptively deep exploration of anxiety and identity perhaps the real murder investigation is the friends we make along the way and it's cool because in this book our protagonist is 16 years old and it says they're undergoing a gender identity crisis and grappling with an ever-growing list of fears and this one is a debut novel from an own voices author and it just sounds like it's going to be something really unique and really interesting so i can't wait to check this one out they also sent the sharp edge of silence which this one wow this cover isn't this cover just kind of stunning like I don't know I love the way that this cover looks and the yellow of the text here but this one is a young adult thriller and this one intrigues me because it says it takes place at this elite boarding school and then we follow these three different students so one of them is like a ballet soloist and super talented student and then we have Max who's the math genius and then we have Quinn who says that she's an artistic dreamer who loves school until a sexual assault leaves her shattered and silent. And then they also sent The Lake House, which this is the one that I'm probably the most excited about because look at this cover. Oh my god, it's stunning. And this one, as far as I understand, it's like a thriller and horror book. And it's about this girl who shows up at this summer camp that her parents sent her to. All she finds is this like burned down husk of where it should be and no survivors. And then it's just her and these other two late arrivals who show up there. They have no cell phone service, no electricity, no shelter, and no way back to civilization. And then it becomes clear that this was not an accident and someone or something is hunting them. Like, I'm sorry, what? That sounds incredible. It sounds so much fun. I can't wait to read this. Then I'm so excited because Scribner also recently sent me two books. They sent me 19 Claws and a Blackbird. And this is the same author as Tender is the Flesh. This one's actually going on sale June 20th. So it'll be going on sale next month. But this one sounds incredible because it's a collection of 20 dark, wildly imaginative short stories. How cool is that? I love the author of Tenders the Flesh. Like Tenders the Flesh was such a weird and like disturbing horror book and I love this author's mind because you know as I just mentioned earlier um short stories in the horror genre just really work for me. Like it's some of my favorite shit so I can't wait to check this one out. I'm also so glad they sent me a finished copy of The Half Moon by Mary Beth Keene which this is one that they did send me a physical arc of it earlier this year and I did try to start reading the physical arc but I ended up DNFing it at the time because I just wasn't in the mood for it at the time but now I'm stoked to have this because I do feel like I'm more in the mood for something like this now I just have to be in a very specific mood for literary fiction books like this but this is one that I'm still so excited about because it's from the same author as Ask Again Yes which was a literary fiction book that came out in like I want to say 2019 that I really enjoyed like that one was a five star for me so I'm so excited for this one it says this novel takes place over the course of one week when Malcolm learns shocking news about Jess a patron of the bar goes missing and a blizzard hits the town trapping everyone in place. All right, and then next up, HTP Books sent me three of their recently published books. The first one they sent is Even If the Sky is Falling, which this is publishing May 30th this month. And this one sounds so interesting because this one is also a collection of short stories and it's romance. Like, what the heck? It's so cool because I didn't think that this was that popular of a thing to like have romance books that are like short stories basically, but I guess it is because this is my second one in this haul. But this one sounds so cool because of the way that all of these short stories are connected it says when an international warning siren accidentally goes off convincing everyone that a meteor shower may just be the end of life as they know it six couples friends exes crushes and rivals must take shelter and then we get six short stories of these different couples that are realizing that the end of the world might be happening and like there's a there's a meteor shower apparently coming i'm also just so intrigued because it has like little blurbs for all six of the stories and one of them it says a pair 
pair of literature lovers that have to take cover in a bookstore bunker and then one of them says a songwriter discovers her newly hired contractor hits all the right notes and then like we have two law students we have two nasa specialist exes and then they also sent the couple's trip which this one goes on sale june 6th and this one oh isn't this cover so cool i love the blue and the red on this and this one is a thriller it says two couples set out together on a hiking trip that goes terrifyingly wrong and it says for fans of ruth ware and lucy folly like okay apparently this one also takes place in the mountaintops of northern sweden so like i love the idea of that setting like that sounds like a lot of fun then they also recently just sent bellies and this one goes on sale august 1st so this one is a bit of an arc copy as well so this one is a queer love story that just sounds like it's gonna be so unique and so hard hitting it says it begins as your typical boy meets boy while out with friends at their local university drag night tom buys ming a drink confident and witty a magnetic young playwright and then it says shortly after they move to london to start their next chapter ming announces her intention to transition and then i just think we follow this couple through the years afterwards as they try to navigate like how this works in their lives and how that things might look different for them after this transition i like too it says tom and ming are forced to confront the vastly different shapes their lives have taken since graduating and each must answer the essential question is it worth losing a part of yourself to become who you want to be it just sounds like it's going to be very beautiful and hard hitting and i did see that um brian washington who's the author of memorial blurbed this which i feel like is the perfect blurb for a story like this because this premise definitely sounds like something brian washington would have written all right and then next up wednesday books ended up sending me a copy of pieces of me by kate mclaughlin and this one is a young adult novel that sounds really interesting because it's about this young girl who is diagnosed with disassociative identity disorder and it just says it's about a girl who finds strength in not being alone and i just think it's going to be really beautiful and hard-hitting potentially i love to this cover and the way that it's called pieces of me with like what she's struggling with like oh my god all right and then next up not ended up sending me a copy of the quiet tenant and this one is a thriller that's going on sale in june this one sounds so interesting and the cover is like genuinely so creepy like just the little light above this like creepy ass looking shed it says a pulse pounding psychological thriller about a serial killer hiding in plain sight and it says it's narrated by the women in his life, his teenage daughter, his girlfriend, and the one victim that he has spared. And I don't know why, just reading that premise right there, it totally reminded me of like notes on an execution, just because of the way we're following like the story of a serial killer, but we're following from the point of view of like different women in his life. And so it just sounds so freaking interesting. And like, I don't know why, but I'm feeling like this could be the perfect read for Summerween for me. Like, I don't know why this cover is giving major like black and orange kind of vibes and the spine is orange. So maybe that's why I'm thinking Summerween question mark. And then the author Eric LaRocca was so freaking kind to send me his new collection of short stories, which is The Trees Grew Because I Bled There. This book is available in a hardcover and it is just so freaking cute and small. I'm kind of absolutely obsessed with the size of this. <laughs> but yeah, this is a collection of eight short horror stories and I read this in the month of April and I am just absolutely obsessed with it. I thought it was so freaking good. Eric LaRocca is one of those horror writers who I'm just really, you know, drawn to his stuff. Like I'm really gravitating towards his books because the writing is just always so freaking good. And I love that Eric LaRocca always has a lot of queer characters in his horror books. Like I just think that's so impressive and so important and something that I don't see a ton of in the horror genre. So I just really appreciate that representation in almost all of his short stories. And then Wendy Walker also recently sent me her newest book, which is called What Remains. And this one comes out June 13th. So very soon, just around the corner. And this one, sorry, it doesn't have a premise like on the book. I was looking everywhere. So I had to pull it up on Goodreads, but it says she saved his life. Now he'll never let her go. We follow this woman who's a detective and she's drawn to cold cases, but each crime is a puzzle to solve pulled from the past. It says she has everything under control until one afternoon when she walks into a department store and is forced to make a terrible choice to save one life she will have to take another but it's interesting because then she finds out that the man whose life she saved his name is wade austin that's not even his real name and he's not who she thinks that he is that sounds really interesting and also i would also like to point out the fact that this also has a lot of orange and black 
on the cover. So I feel like this one could also be a fun pick for Summerween. <laughs> all right, and the last stack that I have here is all the books that I've bought for myself in the last couple of weeks. Let's start with the manga that I've bought for myself. I've bought three manga for myself recently in these last couple of weeks. The first one is Orange, and this is To You, Dear One. This is technically the last volume of Orange in the series. And this is one that I'm so freaking excited to read because I love Orange. Like I love, I absolutely love of this manga series so much, so I can't wait to get to this one. I also ended up getting Spy Family Volume 9 because this is the most recent volume of Spy Family, which is also one of my favorite manga series that I've been reading. I adore it so much and I can't wait to read this one. And then I also ended up getting the first volume of My Summer of You, and I ended up getting this one because I bought it at the time when Barnes & Noble was doing that like buy one get one 50% off manga or something like they had some kind of sale going on. And so I ended up getting this one along with with orange because I thought I might as well, you know, pick up something new and try it out. And I have not yet read this one, but I figured it would be like the perfect manga to read this summer because it's literally like my summer of you. And as far as I know, it's a it's a romance between these two boys finding themselves and each other through a shared love of films. So like that was the main reason why I wanted to read it because of the whole like film lovers aspect of this, like yes. And then I have recently purchased Happy Place by Emily Henry. This was a book that I literally purchased the day that it came out. I was just like, I need this in my life right now. I did an entire reading vlog dedicated to this book. If that video is out by the time that this is out, then I will have it linked down below. But if not, it will be coming soon. And yeah, this was quite the experience. You know, it's the new Emily Henry. It's a romance novel. This one's kind of like a second chance romance because we're following these people who were fiancés and now they're pretending to be fiancés because their friends are having this like gathering and they don't want to like ruin the vibes of like hanging out with their friends at this like at this cottage that they always go to in the summer. And so it's like not fake dating but it kind of is fake dating because they have to pretend to still be together, you know? It's a fun time. I also ended up buying It's Me Charlie even though I have regrets about buying this one because this one is an extreme horror book that I read recently for a vlog. Okay, I read it for a vlog. I have some regrets. It wasn't my thing and I'm quickly going to be unhauling this one as well. So goodbye. And then lastly, I do have that stack of books that were all books that I bought in that recent um, book shopping vlog that I did with my mom. We went book shopping in, you know, like the Linwood Edmonds area in Washington. So if you'd like to see that vlog, if you missed it, I'll have it linked down below. But I did get a fat stack of books from shopping that day. I ended up getting highly suspicious Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert, which is one that I'm so excited to read because this is the first young adult from Talia Hibbert, at least as far as I know. And I'm just so curious to see how that's gonna go because I loved Get a Life Chloe Brown and like that's, you know, the romance trilogy that she came out with. So I'm really curious to check this one out. And then I also ended up getting Something Wild and Wonderful, which this one looks so freaking cute. It's a romance from that same author who wrote Love and Other Disasters, which is a book that I read last year. And I thought that that one was okay, but this one sounds even cuter. I'm especially excited for this one because it's a queer romance, but it involves the Pacific Crest Trail, which, hello, I'm a huge fan of the book Wild, which is about the Pacific Crest Trail and like hiking that Pacific Crest Trail. And so this one is about how the this couple meets when they're on the Pacific Crest Trail. Like what? Very excited for this one. And then some thrillers that I picked up in that vlog included One of Us is Lying and The Other Family. One of Us is Lying is like a young adult thriller that I actually just recently read in the month of April. And then The Other Family is a thriller about this family that like moves into a new home. And then it says the catch is that its previous residents were victims of a grisly triple homicide that remains unsolved. And on the front here, it says the watcher knows who you are and what you did. It sounds like it's gonna be super creepy and interesting. And then I also picked up a few romance books, including Thank You For Listening. I have The No Show and The Stand In, which these are all books that I've been super interested in reading recently. I mean, Thank You For Listening is by Julia Whelan, who is an audiobook narrator that I really enjoy. And this story is about an audiobook narrator and it's a romance about an audiobook narrator. So I'm like, that is so freaking cool and so unique. I don't think I've ever read a book that follows an audiobook narrator. Like, how cool is that? And then in The No Show, this is by Beth O'Leary. And this one, it says three women who seemingly have nothing in common find that they're involved with the same man. And this one, the stand-in, it just sounds especially cute. It 
says that she meets Chinese cinema's golden couple and then the world is turned on its head. The famous actress has a proposition due to their uncanny resemblance. She wants Grace to be her stand-in. I don't know, it sounds adorable. I'm also just like a big fan of this cover. Like, is this cover not the cutest thing you've ever freaking seen in your life. I'm obsessed. And I think those are all of the books that I have for this haul today. I told you it was a lot. I know it's an excessive amount of books. You'll have to let me know if you've read any of the books mentioned in this haul or if you plan to read any of the books mentioned in this haul. I would love to know that. And thank you so, so much for watching as always. And I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.